most people think of community as a Facebook group and I'm pretty mm -hmm. vocal about the fact that that is not a community. The community, it's the people that you interact with. It's the people that you're bringing together to accomplish a common cause. Everyone who's listening who might be a little bit new to this, what really is a community? What do you mean when you say that? Most people think of community as a Facebook group and I'm pretty vocal about the fact that that is not a community. The community, it's the people that you interact with. It's the people that you're bringing together to accomplish a common cause. And so when we think about community as a Facebook group, we really limit how we interact with and serve our people. But when we look at them as a group of people and we say, okay, how do we serve this group of people? And we can use any medium or any channel we want. Then you start to really see the vision for connection. What I want people to realize is that a community has such a broad definition. And most people say it's just like a group of people with a common interest. But what I really teach in inside of my framework, that first pillar is cause. A common cause is going to trump a common interest every time. So when we get really clear on the mission of our community and what we as individuals and as a group are trying to create and accomplish together, that is what motivates us. That's what's going to help bring us together and create that sense of joint accomplishment and belonging that we all really want my community or it's that group of people and it doesn't matter the platform in which we're interacting that's just a small piece of the puzzle in fact in my framework it's like a sub pillar of a pillar it's like a really small piece the actual space that we're doing this in okay. but it's all those other elements of the specific purpose of the culture that we're creating like what are the beliefs the behaviors and the boundaries that we want to create for this community how are we connecting and creating safety and engagement those are all of the things that we look for when we talk about community. Oh, I love that. I think about my community and we call ourselves the unicorns for unicorn digital marketing assistance. We are embracing what makes us special and unique. And it's really coming from a place of abundance. <laughs> I know. And that's the thing. It's like, once you define your culture, like I tell people, you need to outline your beliefs, your behaviors, and your boundaries. And once you okay. do that, it impacts the content that you share because the content that you create should be created with the purpose of attracting the right fit community member. That's ultimately what we want. And so when you can outline the beliefs and the behaviors and the boundaries of a right fit community member, so you outline those beliefs, and then that shapes the content that you share, not just in your community, but on your social platforms and in your emails, because ultimately the job of that content is to make somebody not only want to be a member of that community and to, to hold on to that identity, but to feel like they already have the identity, because that's the easiest way to convert somebody into your offers or your services is for them to feel like, well, of course I'm going to join because I am this person. I am not a sparkly girl. <laughs> that That's like the brand. That's like the bumper sticker. I am Sporty Spice over here, you know, like coaching my kids soccer, but, you know, kind of encapsulated the feeling of uniqueness and being the Jill of all trades and owning whatever makes you special and putting it together in a unique way. Yeah. So. And, I, and I love too, just that you said like, it's not you. And that's, I think a mistake a lot of business owners make is they try to make the culture and the community them but it's not for you. It's for the people that you're going to serve. And so that means it may not, it shouldn't be misaligned with who yeah. you are from a core values perspective, but it can and should be a reflection of the community itself and not necessarily of you. Oh my gosh, I love that. So tell us a little bit more about these community strategies that we should be implementing. There's four key pillars that you need. And the first one we've talked about a little bit, so I won't go into more depth than that, but that's the cause piece, which is that clear purpose. People need to know where you're going, where are we headed? The second piece is culture, which we've also talked about. This is those beliefs, behaviors, and boundaries that will shape your community. And like I said, there are some things that will naturally rise up, but you don't want to leave it to the community to create this culture. If you do, you'll end up like some of my clients have where you look back and you're not engaged in your community. And when you ask yourself why, you're like, because it's not really a place where I want to hang out. Well, you are intentional about creating the culture. So you have to go back and do a reset, which a lot of people do, which is totally fine. You own your community, you can do that. But take the time to really shape it intentionally because culture will happen. 
whether you drive it or not. Okay, so what is your third community strategy that you're gonna share? Yeah, so the third, third piece is communication, which a lot of people feel like they're like, that's not community, but it is because how we communicate is so essential. And the biggest mistake here is when people think about communication, they think about one way communication to an individual or to the masses. And that's just one part. There's three different pieces of communication. One is that outgoing, that megaphone. What, how are we making sure that people know where they're supposed to be? What offers are out there? What do we want to share with them? It's not like cruise director role. <laughs> the other piece is the incoming, which is how are we intentionally hearing from people? What channels do we have where our community can reach out to us? And I really encourage you inside of your content that you're you're doing to be asking those kinds of questions, to be asking people to reply to your emails, to send you a DM, because the more we hear from our community, the better we understand our avatar. And the better we understand our avatar, the better our messaging gets, and that helps increase conversions. So, but you really wanna make sure that they feel like they're being heard, seen, valued. And so that's that incoming opportunity, whether it's a survey or a quick question in a post it is all valuable. And then the third is what I call internal, but it's really the back and forth conversations. Think of it like that walkie talkie where you can kind of watch your community engage and listen in. You can choose whether you're going to participate in that or not, but this can happen in your Instagram comments. It can happen in your like Facebook group, for example. It can happen on Zoom calls where people are having discussions and breakout rooms. That's that opportunity for that engagement type content. And we 100% want to facilitate that. But we always want to be thinking about all three of those elements of communication and making sure that the brand experience is consistent across all of them. We may think of our Facebook group differently than our support channel, differently than our email or whatever that might be, but our community doesn't. They see it all as one experience. And so they're going to judge you based on how you respond to a DM on Instagram, just as much as they are about their experience in your Facebook group or what happens when they email your support channel or what they see on your website. So we have to really be thinking about how are all of these different touch points and interactions with us from a communication perspective reflecting our brand and the kind of culture and community we wanna create. I just love how you tied everything together from collecting the messaging and to having this engagement and to representing your brand. I just don't think that the person managing your inbox sometimes, I'm like going on a tangent here, like they have to get it. This is like the crux of your business. Yeah, but that's ultimately like going to the back to the framework, the fourth pillar is connection. And oftentimes people think they have a connection problem, but the truth is they have a safety problem. Going back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we, we start with that base of physical needs. So food, water, shelter, clothing, and then everybody jumps straight to the belonging right? This feeling of connection. But in between those two is psychological safety, that feeling of I am in a safe space so that now I can connect and experience belonging because you can't experience connection if you can't be yourself. So how do we create that deeper feeling of belonging and connection? Well, it really comes from knowing others and being known, but that takes psychological safety. So going back to the things that we've talked about that will break trust, right? Communicating, you can't feel safe if you don't feel hurt. That's why that incoming communication is so important. When we think about safety, we go back to the culture piece and the boundaries and upholding those, but we also really think about just leadership overall. I think people really want trust and clarity. They want authenticity. They want integrity. And all of that stems from the leader. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love how you summed up those four community strategies. I think you have a freebie to help us on the connection piece. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, for sure. So I, whenever I talk about that, people are like, but yeah, Shanna, so how do I actually get people to connect? I want to know. <laughs> so if you have a safe community, uh, go to connectionideas.com. Super easy. There's over 77 different ways that you can create more connection opportunities for your community. And I put them all there because your community is unique. And I also don't want you to feel like there's a formula to it. You get to play, you get to throw spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks. And that's what that guide is for. It walks you through some of those core pieces and elements around connection. And then it throws 
all those ideas your way so that you can read through the list, highlight some things that you want to try and see what your community enjoys the most. I'm seeing Facebook communities with low engagement. Do you have any advice for reviving something that might be a little bit DOA? I always go back to the cause and culture. Make sure you're really strong on your cause and very niche specific mission. Oftentimes what was niche two years ago is no longer because our industry is growing so fast and then getting really clear on the culture, resetting around that culture often because people forget. And oftentimes you've had people in there for a long time, but they've forgotten why they joined in the first place or what you're trying to create. But when it comes to a Facebook group, for example, my question always comes down to what is your other channel of communication that is pointing people to the Facebook group for a compelling reason to stay? It's like they have to be compelled to go to the Facebook group and I have to enjoy or get value out of the experience when they're there because that's the reward, right? We are we are humans and uh, and kind of Pavlov's dog a little bit in nature and that we're not going to repeat a behavior that isn't rewarding. So give them the stimulus. They're not going to see it in their Facebook news feed anymore. So you need text, you need email, you need some way to drive them into the Facebook group. And then there has to be a reward for them taking action, meaning that you've got to have compelling, good, valuable content. This was so fun. I really enjoyed our conversation. I'm so glad we finally did it. Do you have any parting words for anyone who is helping their clients create communities like this? I think the biggest thing that can be really challenging when you're supporting somebody else is that they are not clear on their cause and they are not clear on their culture. And so just having them listen to this episode or giving them just some questions like, what is the purpose of our community? What are our beliefs about our community? What are the behaviors we want to see? And what are the boundaries? What are the things we don't want to see? If they could answer those four questions for you, then you can help shape how that actually plays out in the community on the day to day. Oh, so good. Because you know, we see that as a struggle point with our clients all of the time. <laughs>